Good morning and welcome to In Touch with TJC. Today is the sixth Sunday after Easter. And we bring you love and blessings from God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Amen. Once again, we welcome you to In Touch with TJC an inspirational program coming to you on GBC Obonu FM 96.5 MHz from the Tema Joint Church, an ecumenical body located at Tema Community 7. The vision of the Tema Joint Church is to bring men, women, youth, and children into true fellowship with God so that they can live life at the fullest in Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. It is a church which seeks to inspire people with the good news of Jesus Christ through worship, evangelism, witnessing, nurturing, and service to the community. The Tamar Joint Church seeks to create a dynamic redemptive center where ordinary people know and share God's love. Thank you for tuning in, and those of you watching on the various social media platforms, thank you for making time to fellowship with us. We have our associate ministers with us, the Reverend Timothy Victor Bobby and Reverend Canon CSP Selwyn SNA Okine. They are both associates of the Tema Joint Church. In attendance or in our midst this morning is also one of my favorite lady apostles. She's a gorgeous, godly, generous. She is the Reverend Dr. Joyce and She is the Rosalind Reverend Dr. Joyce Rosalind Anna. Founder, and founder, 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 founder of the Salt and Light and Executive Director of the Salt and Light and She will be delivering the sermon. And Reverend Obobi will lead us through intercessory prayers. We'll continue as the choir lead us to sing from the Amazing Grace hymn now. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee.
Joint Church Choir. And at the organ is Brother Perry Tompani. I am the very Reverend Helena Upoku Sakodie, the presenter. We want to continue to appeal to all of you, those who are members and those who have become members of our virtual church. And the virtual church has come to stay anyway. It is a house church and it is a digital church as well. We have the church's USSD code that you can use to send us money. So you dial star 725 hash, and following the prompt, you enter the church's code, which is 3264205. And if you are like me, and you can follow this long USSD stuff, just use the good old Momo number or the account, and it's 024-345-6230. We shall be crawling the numbers, and then we will repeat it from time to time for the benefit of those who are listening on radio. Let us pray. Oh God, you are the hope of all the ends of the earth the God of the spirits of all flesh. Hear our humble intercession for all races and families on earth, that you will turn our hearts to yourself. Remove from our minds hatred, prejudice, and contempt for those who are not of our own race or color, class or creed, that departing from everything that estranges and divides, we may by you be brought into unity of spirit in the bond of peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Tema Joint Church Choir will continue with us. They will lead us to sing when we live in unity. After which, we invite the Reverend Dr. Joyce Rosalind Aye to read the scripture and also to present the message that God has for us through her to us. When we live in unity, AGH 292.
The scriptures appointed for today are Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 6 to 14, 1 Peter 4, 12 to 16, John 17, 20 to 26. I shall read them in that order. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. Verse 6 to 14. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. After he said this, he was taken before their very eyes and a cloud hid, from their, hid him and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly Two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called Mount Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas of James. They were joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verses 12 to 16. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even a meddler. However, if you suffer as Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear his name. John chapter 17, verses 20 to 26. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. In them and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, through, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. 
I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. The words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I'm grateful to the resident chaplain and to the council because of our inability to meet. Coronavirus or COVID-19 has changed our lives and the way we do things, including the way we do church. For how long this is going to be, we do not know, because we do live in a global village. And even if we get well, as people come from other places, they may bring the virus with them. What I do know, though, is that we who have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord recognize that we live in a God-created God-controlled, God-sustained, and God-filled world in which it has pleased God the Father to make his fullness known to his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our risen Lord and Savior. So to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be praised forevermore. Shall we pray? Worship and thanks and glory we ascribe to you, O triune God. We honor and adore you for the gift of today and everything that pertains to life and godliness. We rejoice in this day and by acts of our own wills, we declare that you are the Lord of our lives. We are not our own, we belong to you and give you your rightful lordship over our lives. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy and peace in these very difficult and strange times. Thank you for your provision and protection over our lives from our head of state to the newborn baby in this country. Thank you that we can still operate as church, though virtually. We are grateful for the fact that your spirit will be with us and that soon you will restore us to physical fellowship in your own beautiful time, even if it is not the old normal. Thank you for your healing grace and for your wisdom through this period of the pandemic. We thank you for our doctors, our nurses, our paramedical staff. We thank you for generous people who have provided many things during this time. Speak to us, O oh Lord our God, and enable us to worship you in spirit and in truth. I step aside, O oh Lord, that your word will come forth with power through your Holy Spirit. We give you all the praise because you have enabled us to pray through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, our theme for today is that all may be one. I remember my time in Achimota School, my first day there, I was made to understand that the motto of the school is Ut Omnes Unum Sint. And as a 12 year old, I found that these big words were really wonderful. I had no idea that all those big words meant one thing, that all may be one. So here I am, many, many years later, speaking on something that I knew when I was 12. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this passage, in John's Gospel, makes us know that unity among all believers is the only way that the world will be convinced that Christianity is not a religion like others, but a relationship 
derived from God himself through his Son and the Holy Spirit to those who believe. It is not the oneness that has to do with administrative procedures. It is a oneness that comes from the throne room of God himself. And I am so happy that God has accepted this prayer. The rest is left for you and for me to make sure that we demonstrate this unity. So my question is, if indeed we know that our calling is based on one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all, what kind of unity are we practicing? Jesus recognizes that Christians will never organize churches the same way, nor worship him the same way. I belong to those who prefer very sedate hymns, but I know that there are others who also like their music very loud. However, if in doing so, it is to one Lord, it is about one faith, it is one baptism and one God and Father, then the unity is in our hearts because we are worshiping the same Jesus who has given his life for us. And as we recall, Jesus clearly says in John 13, 34 to 35, that he was giving us a new commandment, that we love one another, and that it is as we love one another that the world will know that we are his disciples. So the question is, how are we helping this unity of the body of Christ? And the question is to me, as well as it is to you. Are we helping build others up as we are supposed to do? Are we working together in unity because we have one faith? And that faith is based not on our works, but on the finished work on Calvary of the Lord Jesus Christ. My fourth question is, are we exalting Christ Jesus as Lord and head of the church? Question five, are we refusing to get sidetracked by arguing over divisive matters. Question six, are we playing our roles as branches of the same true vine and bringing glory to the Father? These are questions we need to take seriously because the prayer is for you and the prayer is for me who call ourselves followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the unity Christ prayed for is, one, knowing and experiencing the love of the Father and fellowship with Christ. Two, separating ourselves from the world unto the Lord. Three, being sanctified or made holy by the truth of God's word. Four, desiring to share the gospel with others through our words and through our lives. Five, this unity means living in obedience to God's word. Jesus says it so clearly. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. Six, having a spiritual unity of heart, of purpose, of mind and will, and seven, having a unity of faith in God's word and living holy lives. Yes, living holy lives. This is not something we usually want to hear, but we cannot be Christians 
and claim we belong to Christ Jesus if our lives do not reflect his holiness and his righteousness. It is obvious that the unity that the Lord is asking for is not natural. It is supernatural. And that is why the Lord Jesus tells his disciples in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, part of our reading, that we will receive power from the Holy Spirit. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that enables us to recognize that as believers, we have one heart, the heart of the Father through Jesus. We have one purpose, to represent God on this earth. And we have one desire, to make him known to everybody. It is an empowerment that enables our lives and our words give witness that we, we have indeed met with the Lord Jesus Christ and he has made our lives better. Beloved, without the Holy Spirit's power, there's no way we can demonstrate to the world that salvation through Christ Jesus is the only way to God and that we ourselves individually and as a body have witnessed this have experienced this and we are living testimonies of this grace. As we live in this spiritually enhanced unity, we become obvious targets, of course, of Satan as well as, well as the world and the self. And that is why suffering for Christ is more real than we are willing to think. A reading in 1 Peter 4, 12 to 16 makes it quite clear that when we live the supernatural lives of believers united in faith, united in love, when we live in humility and service, we will go through suffering. The greater suffering we go through, and many of us don't want to recognize it, is that we are targets of ridicule. We are targets of envy. People reject us. They think we are, what do they say in our language? If you are no cochon. If you are like a leper, le Cristo. And sometimes if we don't take care, we are so interested in getting public acclaim that we refuse to live this real life of power in the Holy Spirit to represent Christ. Methodist hymn 511, Begone Unbelief, stanza three says, his love in times past forbids me to think that he will leave me at last in Trouble to sink. While each Ebenezer I have in review confirms his good pleasure that he will help me quite through. And stanza four says, why should I complain of want or pain? He told me no less. And the heirs of salvation, I know, have gone through this. Beloved, suffering for Christ is real. It's an everyday situation. And we should recognize that that too is another way that believers will stand in unity. After all, the unity is not just among ourselves. But Jesus is saying we should have the same unity in him as he has unity in God. So unity is not just believers being united in heart and purpose, but be united with Christ Jesus, who alone reveals God to us. When we suffer for Christ, we are blessed. We don't want to hear this, especially if we have lost people during this COVID-19. But everyone who dies in Christ does not die, but goes home to the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ tells us that he has shared 
his glory with us. That's what he tells the Father. He has shared his glory with us. And what is this glory? I know we wish that we'll be walking around with halos around our heads so that when people see us, they'll think we are angels. Well, I'm talking of different glory. A different glory. Our glory in Christ is the path of humble service. It is bearing our cross just like Jesus Christ bore his cross to Calvary. Our cross must be born. Jesus says if we will be his disciples, we must deny the self. Take up our cross daily. Not once a month. Not once a year, but daily. Number two, this humility and self-denial and a willingness to suffer for Christ ensures the oneness that we have as believers. And this also brings us glory. When the world complains about us, it is because they are looking for something better from us. So when they see that we are divided, sometimes they use our denomination. But denomination is not division. If we believe, as we say in our creed, in one Lord, one Father, one Holy Spirit, one Jesus Christ. The rest is left for you and for me. Will you, will I, intentionally practice the unity of the body that Christ has prayed for? Now remember, because Jesus was raised from the dead by the Father and is seated at the right hand, we can confidently say that the prayers have been answered. Now let us go forth and demonstrate this unity. Let us demonstrate that as Christians, we are one. We are one in heart. We are one in spirit. We are one in purpose. We are one in service. We are one in love. Yes, we may live in different places which we can call denominations, but we are one because Jesus Christ is Lord and head of the church. His spirit is ready to help us let us go forth and do that. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in Christ, if you just tuned in, you are listening or watching in touch with TJC, an inspirational program coming to you from the Tema Joint Church. And once again, we want to continue to appeal to you. The virtual church has come to stay. So we have to find a way to support God's work through our giving. And the church's USSD code is we start by dialing star 725 hash and following the prompt you enter the code which is 3264270.5 or to make it easier you use good old momo and the number is 02434562 Three zero. We shall sing together, lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us from the Amazing Grace Hymnal. Whilst we invite Reverend Obobi to lead us in an altar call and also through the intercessory prayers. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. 345. 
in the Amazing Grace hymnal. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us on the world's end they shall see. God, us, guide us, keep us, feed us, for we have no help but thee. Yet possess in every blessing. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. If you have Jesus, you have life. As many who believed him, even those who received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Even as you invite him into your life, may you receive this power to become a son of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, oh Lord, enter their space, Lord. Let them feel your presence wherever they find themselves now. Let each and every person know you in this time. In Jesus' name. Even as we continue to pray, you would even realize that probably you've given your life to Christ. But after starting off in the spirit, you are now ending in the flesh. And as long as we find ourselves in the flesh, our differences will be very prominent. We'll see ourselves as different people fighting different causes, yet God has called us even to one purpose, even as we heard in the sermon. I want you to pray at this moment and yield yourself even unto God. Tell him that you have gone on your own way. I mean, you veered off, you started well. Like Paul will say, we have become so foolish like he said to the Galatians, they started off in the spirit and yet they now are in the flesh. Because we want to uh, champion our own cause, we have built empires even as churches. And we, all we try to do is emphasize the differences, the little differences as we heard even in the message. Shall we pray that God will lead us and cause us even to think about the weightier matters the things that bring us together so that we'll be one. Because when we are one, the world will know. The world will know. It makes the world know. It is a good testimony. It's a testimony that cannot be denied when they see us as one people. Pray that God will forgive you for all your wrong as a person. The way you have veered off and you have championed this cause and therefore messed up the church and the testimony of the church. Pray that God will accept you. God will turn us all around. Fill us with the Spirit and lead us like we sang. Lead us and guide us in all our way. So that our unity will be realized amongst us. And that in that unity, the power of God will be revealed. And souls will be saved. Souls will be delivered. Chains will be broken. Prison doors will be opened. Plagues will be lifted. The heavens will be opened. And so Lord we pray. May we find the way.
may we hear your voice. May we be led forth as sheep following one shepherd. And that even as we follow in step with the Spirit, may we find this unity. For there, Lord, you have commanded your blessing, life forevermore. That is anointing. We'll feel that anointing as expressed in your word. We thank you, Father, because we know that, Lord, you do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think of or even imagine. We say thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved in Christ, if you just tuned in, you are listening to In Touch with TJC, an inspirational worship experience coming to you from the Tema Joint Church. And we bring our service to a close by asking the United Praise to sing uh, two choruses for us. We want you to get off from your couch, wherever you've been seated for so long, and shake the devil off. Just shake the devil off.
to a close as we share the words of the grace together. Shall we share the words of the grace together, please? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, we appreciate you for tuning in, and we invite you to tune in again same time next week on GBC Obonu FM 96.5 megahertz, or on all our social media platforms. And remember, God is still with us, and he's still in control. No matter the turbulence that we are seeing, he hasn't lost control. He will definitely walk us through these times so that we can raise his praise to the glory of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, thy word abideth. service is over for the day. May the Lord continue to be with all of us, even now and always. Amen.